So now in this video, we're going to come back to this circuit here. So it's a 555 timer, and there is a light dependent resistor and fixed resistor voltage divider that determines the output of the 555 timer. And zooming in to get a little better look, we can see that we have the light dependent resistor to the positive rail of the power supply it comes to pin 6 here, the threshold pin which monitors the voltage and then also there's a jumper here going to pin number 2, the trigger pin which monitors the voltage as well and then a resistor coming there. So we have a resistor to the positive rail and a resistor to the negative rail. We tapped into there and we have a variable voltage. So now my favorite tool for measuring the light dependent resistors, uh, resistance mostly, is the LCR meter. So you just plug it, the component, directly into the slots there. It's not polarized, that's for capacitors. Make sure you discharge capacitor before you test them. But in any case, you turn the power on and it automatically measures the component's inductance, capacitance, and resistance. This component actually has all three of those within it but it's the vast majority of the components property is resistance so with this light level we have about 700 kilo or 700 ohms of resistance at that light level I blocked it a little bit and went up a little bit so that's in kilo ohms so a little less than 0.7 kilo ohms is 500 ohms I cover it with my hand the resistance goes up and uh, we'll look at that a little bit more for now we'll look at bright light so I'll try to get my headlamp on it without blocking the camera and we usually get below 100 ohms and we should be able to get there we go down uh, close to about 60 we were at that before but uh, there we go 53 so really easy to get down low now we are going to make this darker and there we go, that is in kilo ohms right there. I'll zoom in a little bit, try to get that number a little bit easier to read. But that's kilo ohms. Let's slowly start uh, making it darker. And right there, three million ohms, three mega ohms. And I think this goes up to like 30 or something before. There we go, I'm covering it better and better. And now there's so much resistance, it thinks it's a capacitor because uh, no currents flowing through. So that was the capacitance it was providing. So this component, tens of millions of ohms at least. So there's 10 million ohms and it's going up. And so when it's dark, you got 10 million ohms. So you can go from being almost a conductor, a pretty low value resistor, or to an insulator where virtually no current is getting through this component if it is dark enough. So now, let's come back to the circuit as we had originally wired it. So when it's dark, the output's high, and when it's brighter, the output is low. So first thing we can do, we can just yank out the resistor to get a better visualization of what's going on. So right now, it doesn't matter the value of the resistor. The resistance to the negative rail is a lot lower than what's going to the positive rail. And we have a high output. And we can yank the resistor out right now they're both lit up because the outputs going high and low in a square wave about 60 times a second because this is acting like an antenna and the electromagnetic fields around it is triggering both the uh, trigger and the threshold so now we go directly to the positive rail doesn't matter the value of the resistor a lot less resistance to the positive rail than to the negative rail because the air is tons of resistance and we have a low output so that's basically what's going on even with the voltage divider so sometimes when the uh, light is bright then the light dependent resistor makes the resistance to the positive rail so much lower than what is to the negative rail that we have a low output and when we cover it up there's so much resistance to the positive rail in relationship to the negative rail that we get a low voltage. Now one thing we can do is let's say we don't want to change anything really but we want the red LED on we want the output high when it is bright 
instead of blue one like we have now and we want the blue one on when the light is low instead of the red one all we have to do is swap these two components and we will get the opposite effect of what we had before so there we go and now it is bright enough the red LED is on instead of the blue one and now the blue one so the voltages or the response is the same the light levels I should say but it is uh, reversed and now we're going to swap the value of the fixed resistor so I really kinda randomly picked this value at one time I tried the uh, 1 kilo ohm resistor instead of 10 kilo ohm resistor and so right now unfortunately we don't have enough light level to bounce between the two of them because remember there's hysteresis there's a range where you have to you have to go from uh, one third to two thirds and in between there it holds where it is so with the headlamp there I can get it bright enough to set it back and now I have to get it really or fairly dark I should say to get the red LED on and it holds there so that's the hysteresis right there the holding we have to go to the extremes to get changes and I gotta get really dark before the red LED will turn on and then I have to get really bright before it will go back to the blue LED and of course again let's say we want the output to behave the opposite way we can just swap them around and we will get the same effect but the output will be different so so dark it goes blue and then bright enough now it goes red so now we're back to the 10 kilo ohm resistor and we went lower one thing to remember is that the light dependent resistor gets down fairly close to zero ohms of resistance so we don't consider it limiting current in this case the second resistor here limits the current because pin 6 and pin 2 do not take in any current they just monitor the voltage across them and so we have current be limited by that resistor just always be aware when you're lowering the resistance that the light dependent resistor is getting near zero so you still got to use a high enough value resistor to limit current so now let's go the other way let's take three times the resistance a 33 kilo ohm resistor here instead of the 10 kilo ohm resistor and now when I make it dark the output doesn't change I gotta make it really dark I gotta put my hand in front of it too and now it flips and uh, let's uh, let's get her to flip and then I'll set the lamp to the lowest light setting okay it's still pretty sensitive there so I thought maybe it would take a little more light uh, to to get it going but in case you can play around with the values quite a bit on there and like I said the only real risk especially for this particular circuit is if you use too low of a value of a resistor that you get bright light on the light dependent resistor it doesn't really block current and then you use a low value resistor it doesn't really block current and they both get too hot that's uh, the uh, biggest risk right here otherwise you can play with the values all you want so probably 220 is as low as you would go but the light dependent resistor is always adjusting massively and so your only real control is this fixed resistor and so there's a wide range to choose from to get uh, slightly different outcomes as far as the output is concerned.